All right, well, shoot, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Guten Morgen. For my, it's nice I can speak a little bit of my German here. Um, so, welcome to Unite Berlin. Uh, my name is, I'm going to go backwards, uh, Mark Schonagel, Mark Schernagel, if you're German. Uh, so, I'm the lead evangelist for the Americas, and I focus on the automotive industry. So, uh, what I'm going to show you today is how to get more out of your CAD data using Unity and Pixies. Um, it's going to be all software, so we're not going to do any more PowerPoint except for maybe my little thank you slide. Uh, and what I want to show you today is how we can get some really cool um, CAD data into Pixies, into Unity, show you how just how easy that is. Uh, we'll take a look at how we can get that into VR, um, show you the new material library. So lots of good fun stuff. So what I'm going to first so show you is just how easy it is, as I mentioned, to get this CAD data into Unity. Um, so I've installed the Pixies plugin. For those of you that aren't aware of what Pixies is, we announced a partnership with them a few months ago, uh, and they're the world-class leader in CAD data importing, so we thought, what better company to partner with? Um, and so they make two products. Well, two products that I'm going to show you today. One is the plugin for Unity, um, just the Pixies plugin, and there's also Pixies Studio, which gives you further control for optimizing your mesh, refining it. Um, hopefully we'll have a, a chance today to look at that as well, depending on how long this takes. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I've installed the plugin. Um, this is a blank scene. I've done nothing. I've got one prefab loaded because I want to show you that in a minute. Uh, but other than that, this is a brand new scene from Unity. I've done nothing to it except for installed the Pixies plugin. So I'm going to go Pixies import CAD. And it's a very simple file requester comes up. Uh, click on the two little dots. And if I go to my desktop, I have the actual Lexus drive train from the LC500H. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to open this, and I just get a few little options here on my import. Um, so I'm going to keep these top ones here the same. The scale is right, right hand is the same, uh, Z being up is the same. This menu right here, this is going to structure how your CAD data is going to come in as regards to the hierarchy. Um, so I'm going to tell it to transfer all the objects under one root. So every single object will be under one node, uh, so I'll just keep that as the default. I'm not going to choose LODs. I'm going to show you LODs, the level of details, uh, in just a little bit, but this will make the import just a little quicker. Uh, I'm going to tell it to use the highest possible quality setting. And from there, I'm just going to say, all right, you know what? Go ahead and import. Now, normally in a demo, I wouldn't waste one whole minute of your time showing me importing a model, but this is pretty phenomenal. I'm going to fire up my resource monitor and my performance monitor. And one thing we can see right away is the Pixies plugin is fully multi-threaded. Uh, I've got a fairly powerful laptop. It's a gaming laptop. It's a 13-inch you know, machine. It's not some big monster with a 1080 in it. Uh, it's got a GTX 1060 and a Core i7-7700 CPU. So, you know, fairly good on the, on the laptop side. On the workstation side, pretty minimal specs. So this is the kind of performance you can expect from a laptop. Imagine if you're on one of those AMD Threadrippers or one of the Intels with, you know, dual Xeons and 64 cores or whatever you have. This stuff imports really, really quick. So it's going to take maybe about another 20 seconds. Uh, this happens every time I do it. We get a little dip right here as it starts to do a different part of the import process. And in just a second, it should wrap up and we will have the model. Now, one thing that's amazing about what I'm importing is I've never had a company like Lexus give us the actual production CAD model of a vehicle. They gave us the drivetrain, which includes the engine, the, the powertrain, uh, the suspension, the interior, the exterior of the car. They gave us everything, and I have it, which is crazy. So I get to show that um, around the world, which is really, really fun because it's, a, it's an incredibly impressive model. So again, normally I wouldn't waste your time with an import. But to import this model, which is going to be almost 50 million triangles and over 30,000 or 3,000 objects, it imported that quickly. So there we go. There's my model, and I forgot to reset my camera. But there we go. That is my model of the powertrain, of the, uh, the drivetrain. So every little detail is on there. And just look at the crazy quality of this model. Every little nook and cranny, every detail is on here. Now, from here, I could start to do a lot of things. I could go to my materials, and I could find maybe uh, some kind of some. Actually, you know what? Before I show you that, let me show you one other thing. What just imported is inside my. Uh, there we go. Inside this folder, if I expand this, these are all the different elements that just imported from that model. I'll just go and go through these. Look at all those separate objects. Now, remember, these are all previously NURBS models that had to be converted to polygons, tessellated, and imported. So that minute that we waited, that's what we waited for. 
a crazy amount of stuff just came in in that, uh, in that little bit of time that we took. So it's a really, really efficient process, as we can see. Um, so from here, I can go and start to, as I mentioned, add materials. So I've got some materials here. Maybe uh, I'll just drag and drop like some rubber onto the tires, like so, to get that a little bit better. Um, the colors that we see on here, Pixies preserves the colors that you assign, the materials that you assign in your CAD software. So this is coming from Katia. Uh, these were assigned in Katia, and then of course, you know, I can start to just as I did, overwrite some of these materials to make them look a little bit more realistic for modeling or for uh, for visualization. Now, right now, I'm using 2017.4, the the final stable release for 2017. In a minute, I'm going to show you 2018.2 with a high definition render pipeline and show you some of the really, really, really cool new materials we have coming. So I don't want to focus too much on materials now. Maybe uh, maybe I'll just finish making the tires all be the proper color like so. There we go. All right. So one thing that's really popular to do with CAD data is to, to do the exploded view, not actually make it explode, which you could do in Unity as well, because it's a game engine and has all the powerful tools to explode stuff. Uh, but I want to do an exploded view where you actually kind of see the model come apart. So there's a couple ways I could do that. I could use a tool like Timeline. If you don't know what Timeline is, it's a, it's a way of really easily animating objects. I don't want to spend too much time with that today. I can, if you go back to the booth later, I can show you. But basically, you just start grabbing your components and just moving them, and it records that animation. Uh, what instead I want to do is show you a more procedural way of doing this with a simple script. Since Unity has a full scripting engine behind it, watch how easy I can make an exploded view. The tool I'm going to show you will work on any model that you ever, ever choose. I'll give you my Twitter handle here in a minute, and if you want this script, I can easily send it to you. Um, but what I'm going to do is, we're going to go here, here to the root node. Now notice all the different pieces of geometry that came in. So again, like 3,000 pieces of, of, uh, of individual parts. I'm going to select the root node. And one of the things that is a little different with CAD data versus your traditional 3D data that comes from Maya or Max or, or Cinema or anything like that is you have your, your concept of pivot points. Well, CAD data, you're generally not animating objects, so you don't really care so much where those pivots are. So I need to run a script that's going to reset all my pivots to be dead center so that I can expand this thing from the center. So for that, it's a simple little tool that we wrote. Uh, it's just called Adjust Hierarchy. And that you don't even see it doing anything, but it just reset the pivots for me. So the next thing I'm going to do is add one more script. If I go down here to my script library, I've got just a few scripts in my scene. And I'm going to get this one here called Move and Examine. And I'm going to drop that onto my root node. And we can see that it was added here as a component. And what this allows me to do is this. When I press play, we're going to go into play mode. And now with my middle mouse button, I can do an expanded view. And this will work on any model that you possibly create. No matter how big or how small, it creates a bounding box, figures out some math, and it does the expanded, exploded view for you. So again, happy to send this to you if you want it. And from here, I can spin this all around and look at my model anyway, bring it back and forth like this. But you know what? We can do so much more. So check this out. I've got this fun little VR headset here. Uh, now, I've had to unplug it. So because we're projecting and this uses HDMI and I've got a splitter, uh, it's a little bit different workflow than normal, so I'm going to have to go and plug in my headset and hope this all works. Sometimes it takes a second or two. Come on. Let's get this going. Oh, there. Oh, I unplugged it right as it started. That was great. Let's try this again. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. Come on. You can do it. Live presentations. Mm. Oh, no. Come on, headset. Well, let's do this. Let's close that up, and let's just try this like this. Oh, no. It was all going so well. well let's try this one more time. Ah, mm. oh, bummer. I was going to show you how easy it is to do VR. Again, it's just a, a little strange setup with, the, with all the projection. You know, let me try. Oh, nah. Of course. There it goes. No. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Uh, oh, man. All right, I'm going to unplug the HDMI and hope that that doesn't ruin my projection. We'll see. Otherwise, we'll just, I can show you this at the booth, but let's do this one more time. Plug that in, plug this in, and see if it comes up. Hey, that looks right. Yay, okay, good. Sorry about that. 
All right, so I gotta scan the room. So if you don't know what this headset is, uh, this is one of the Microsoft Mixed Reality headsets. This one's made by Acer. The nice thing about this is for me to travel across the world with it, it doesn't require sensors, so my suitcase is a little bit lighter. Uh, it does inside out tracking. So I just have to scan the room a little bit and this is all working. So if I go back into Unity, uh, if you're unfamiliar with how easy it is to do VR in Unity, all you do is you go to your build settings and you select your target platform. So this is a Windows Universal platform, so I set my build target to Windows Universal. If I was using a Vive or an Oculus Rift, uh, I would simply set it back to PC and then the workflow is exactly the same. But for this headset, it's, it's uh, the Microsoft platform. I click on player settings and I just check this little checkbox. As soon as you check that box, it turns the camera inside of Unity basically into your head. So as crazy as that sounds. So now if I press play, I should see here inside. Come on, did it play? It's on play, do do. Oh no, there we go. All right, so it's starting up. You guys don't see this yet. And I should be able to look around. Sweet, okay, so that's working. Now, I wanna make it so that these controllers actually do something. So I'm gonna stop this. And before I showed you in play mode, I was using my middle mouse button to do the expanded view. What I can also do is just overwrite that input with another simple script, which I'm going to add. So I'm gonna do a couple things. I have my camera and I've got a couple models here, uh, the left and right controller models. Now, these are the Microsoft controllers. The models that I have are actually from the Rift. So these are gonna look like Oculus controllers, but I'm just gonna drop these on my camera. And if I double click and zoom in on them, there they are. Uh, and these are now gonna be visible to me in the real world. And I do one more thing is I just repipe my input from my mouse into the VR headset with this script here. And again, I'm happy to send you these scripts. Just gonna drop it on the root. So now if I press play, I should be able to pick this guy up and grab my controllers. And now it takes a sec for it to pop up in here. So now I can take these, spin my model around, I can grab it and it gets a little jittery because the lights are really bright in here and there's little, these track the lights. But now I can do the exploded view with my hand, like so, spin this all around. And one of the coolest things I've ever done is this. You grab the steering wheel and stick your face into it, like that. I know this is not nearly as cool for you all, but this is like the most satisfying thing you can ever do in VR. Like you're just inside the, I mean, this is a, such a crazy model. All the little fasteners are in there. Well, you can't see the way I see it. Anyway, really, really simple to do and really, really easy. So again, a couple little technical snafus, but which normally doesn't happen when you're projecting and with a bunch of bright lights, but that's how easy it is to basically bring some of this data into Unity and start to, uh, and start to manipulate it. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is, let's go ahead and just take this model and delete it. I'm gonna unplug my headset real quick, cool. I've got another model. Now I imported that one model and it took about a minute. Um, if I spin this around, let's find my original model. Where is it at? Oh, I deleted it, right. Uh, I'm gonna grab another one here, which I've imported previously. So this one's gonna have LODs on it. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this one in. So LODs are level of details, a level of detail. Not all the time do you have a powerful machine. Sometimes you're going out to a tablet or something like that. So for those you need models that are less resolution uh, or you want some that are, you know, when the camera's a little further away, it's, uh, it doesn't render with such high quality. So one of the nice things about the Pixies plugin is it actually creates these LODs for you. So if I select any portion of this model, so I'll just select this component here. And if I select the assembly, let's say, let's select this wheel right here. And if I frame up on it, oops, let's select just maybe this wheel, frame up. So you can see that now under this assembly, this is the, the CAD assembly number, uh, that came from Katia, I've got three LODs. And you can see that over here, I've got this little camera icon. And this is all out of the box. None of this was any special coding. All I did, this took about three or four minutes to import, uh, and I didn't want to waste all of that time. So uh, I've already imported this one. And this one just has three separate models with different quality settings. And notice when the camera is very close to the object, it renders it with the full resolution. As I move the camera away, and it also isolates it, turns the screen white, so you can really see just how, is that good enough? Do we see that pop happen? And if I go here to the lowest quality, you can start to see that it's jaggedy, but because the camera is far enough away, we don't really see it. I can easily adjust 
when those changes happen. So if I want, I would do something that I would never do in the real world, which is make it so that my third quality level is when the camera is really close. But there you can see it's nice, you know, it's very jaggedy, uh, which is great. When models are far away, you don't need it to render thousands of polygons, just render a few hundred. Uh, and this again is all just with one click inside the, uh, inside the plugin. So that's really, really cool. So I'm gonna close this guy up and I've got another version of Unity running, which I'll let this one close up. Mm -hmm. Pop open this one. So what I wanna now show you is some of our new material, uh, some of the new stuff that we have coming with 2018.2 uh, and the new automotive material library that we're creating. So the materials that are on here are all created with our new material pipeline. Now this uh, car paint shader isn't the actual car paint shader that we're gonna ship with 2018.2. If you want, uh, back in the expo, in an uh, Autotech Summit, you'll see a, a video of a Volkswagen, the Touareg, that has the actual new car paint shader on it. Um, this one here is just using a standard um, uh, lit shader. But what we also have is if I go inside the vehicle, we have all these amazing textures that we have that are really, really sweet. All these nice grains, uh, leathers, all these different materials, and we're gonna ship all of these to you. So there's, right now there's well over 100 of them. Uh, and if I zoom in to say this guy here, See, it's a little bit different kind of a velvet. Hopefully you can see that they're pretty subtle. You have to really get in there to see them, but that's what's amazing about them is, you know, they're, they're subtle, but they're amazing. Um, so if I just take a look here, we've got different leathers. Uh, and we're also gonna give you the recipe, whatever you wanna call it, the way that we create these materials. We're not using a million dollar X-Rite machine. Uh, we're actually using about $2,000 worth of camera equipment uh, in about 30 minutes or three or four hours per material to capture it. So you take a little swatch, you put it down, you capture it from a couple different, uh, you move your, your flash around, put a little polarizer on it to get rid of the specular, run it through a couple pieces of software, including some that we've written at Unity to make it tileable, and it creates this, this really nice material for you. So, you know, from there, you can, uh, you can tune things. And the nice thing is they are tunable. So when you scan materials, typically, if it's black, it has to stay black. If you use our process, you can use the material widget and, uh, and change those around. So maybe I'll just apply a couple here, zoom into the seat, and come on, zoom. Actually, let me just reset on that guy. There we go. If I zoom in here, let's maybe take, uh, I don't know, let's put this guy on, gray sofa. That's cool. Yeah, we have a sofa for a seat, right? Who would want a sofa? There we go. Now notice the, the tiling is a bit different there. That's just the resolution of the UV map. Of course, I could easily say, you know what? I want this to be far more uh, dense or less dense, whatever. So oh, 310, that's not what I wanted, 10, there we go. So you can see it's much more detailed there. Depending on what object you're putting it on, you can adjust how, uh, how much grain or how little grain. And again, there's, there's glasses, there's rustic, so we can make this cool rustic burlap. That'd be a great seat to sit on. Yeah, <laughs> you get your new Porsche with some, some rustic or your Toyota, whatever. Anyway, so that's the material library. Uh, I can show you some more of that in the expo, but really, really beautiful materials. Actually, if I just spin around a bit, let me look at one more thing. Of course, anti-aliasing isn't on when we're in uh, the game view, so we're not quite seeing this at its full beautifulness. But uh, again, just look at how awesome, beautiful reflections. Just have a reflection probe on here. Again, this is using 2018.2 beta one. Uh, we are further along in betas now, so we have, uh, we have made some improvements there too. So really good stuff there. So I'm gonna show you one more thing really quick. And why aren't my, oh, okay, sure. Uh, let's close this up. Oh no, ha. No one knows what that was. What? All right, so. I just came back from Le Mans, that was cool, that was, I took that picture, I'm very excited. It's a great race, I don't know if anyone cares about that. Uh, I'm a car guy, so I do. Uh, Pixie Studio, so this is a, a separate product that Pixies offers that allows you to clean up your CAD data, really get to the nitty gritty of, of how that data is gonna be. Um, so what I wanna show you is how you can optimize a model for going into something like a HoloLens, uh, something that doesn't quite have the horsepower of a big machine with a big, uh, you know, big graphics card. So just gonna show you a little bit of that workflow. So what I'll first do is just drag and drop a simple model into, uh, into Pixie Studio. So this is gonna import, this is a NURBS patch model. So we'll see it pop in. It's gonna be all just a bunch of curves, like so, there we go. 
And how am I on time? Okay, I got 10 minutes. All right, so here's a patch model. We don't, it's not tessellated, so we don't actually see the polygons yet. So the first thing I'll do is just tell it to repair CAD. Uh, I'm gonna set the tolerance for uh, 0.1 millimeter, which is the, de the default. And basically what that'll do is any vertices that are uh, 0.1 millimeter or closer, it's gonna merge them into one. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'm gonna do is just tell it to go ahead and tessellate, turn this into polygons. So a couple things here. I'm gonna tell it to use the lowest quality preset so that I, I have the fewest amount of polygons because again, I wanna take this into something like a, a HoloLens where we have a little bit less performance. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to merge any point that's 10 millimeters or closer. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to, uh, to create one polygon out of that. And then lastly, I wanna create a PBR material, a physical based rendering material. So I'm gonna tell it to create my tangents. Click execute and we should see now a polygonal version of my model. Now, if I start clicking on these polygons, each one of these is unfortunately a draw call. If you use Unity, you know the draw calls are, the more you have, the slower your performance is. So one of the things we can really do here is clean up all of that stuff. So what I'll do is I will select my root, I will go to my scene, and I'll just tell it to, uh, to go ahead and merge some parts together. So merge parts, as I should have actually showed you here, is going to get rid of a lot of these objects. Uh, I meant to show you that before, but we had a whole bunch of objects. So this basically merges it into one mesh. Uh, now what I wanna do is delete all of these empty containers where I used to have geometry stored. So for that, we'll go back to scene here and we will do a delete empty assemblies. And that will now create one simple piece of geometry that, uh, that contains this model. So if I turn on my checkerboard, uh, there is no checkerboard. What does that mean? That means we have no UVs. Uh, so we need some UVs, but what I do see is purple. If you see purple, that means you have inverted normals. So if I would bring this into Unity, this would render transparent unless you flew into it. So I wanna go ahead and fix that. So for that, we're just gonna go to optimize mesh, repair mesh, and that will go ahead and get rid of our inverted normals. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and create my UV map. So there is no UV map. So I'll just say UV, generate UV by projection, projection on bounding box, and I'm gonna increase this to 1,000 millimeters, click on execute, click on execute, and almost instantaneously we get our UV map. Now you can see this one is, has a lot of information. Had I kept it at 100, we would have even smaller boxes. Uh, maybe you could take it up to 10,000 and get a, a more, a, a bigger UV map, but this is, uh, this is gonna be fine, so that's good. Let's go ahead and unturn off our checkerboard, turn off our wireframe. And let's see, so the next thing, if we go to our UV viewer, I don't actually have any sprite packing. I, don't, I haven't generated the UV places. So I've generated the mesh, but I haven't actually generated uh, how to place those. So for now, what I'll do is I'll just say UV, repack my UVs. This process takes, oh, a few seconds. So one thing that's fun to do while we're waiting is to go into your cutting view and to just double check that all those purple polygons, all those inverted normals are on the inside of our model. And this is just a way of me killing time while we're waiting for it to pack my polygons or pack my UVs rather, and it should finish in just a second. Cool, it's done. So now if I go into UV viewer, there are my UVs that it created. So lots of nice UVs. So now we could take this in and we could paint our own UV map. Or what I could do is run a tool that's going to put the colors that we got from the CAD data onto our UV map. Uh, so to do that, it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, one nice thing about everything that I've done inside of Pixie Studio is that it's ha everything has API command line ability. So every button that I've pushed so far, I could have done with a command line. So I've got a little script here that basically shows that. And this is gonna show how we can generate, basically bake a diffuse map of all the colors and materials that are on here onto a real texture map. So all I do is I select my object and I go ahead and run this script. So we'll say run script. And it will now, you can see it's giving me my little thing there. It is, I think it's done, should be done. Is it done? Cool, that's good. There's our image. So now we've just created that image map which we can then apply as a material to our, to our object. Uh, show you that workflow really quick. If I click on materials, I'll add a new material. I'll tell it to be PBR, click on okay. We'll give it a name, uh, Unity PBR and tell it that the color, that's good. Change this color to a PBR. There we go. And now I'll tell the texture to be the material that I just created. 
So now I've created a PBR material and I could of course adjust the roughness or the metallicness, whatever. Click on OK and if I want to see that on my actual object so that it exports it, uh, what I can do is select my object and select my material right here. There it is and now that is now the textured uh, version of this model. So the last thing I'll do is just go and do a file, export model, give it a name, we'll call this, um, I don't know, berlin.fbx, like so. Go ahead and minimize this guy, open up Unity again. We'll just do this guy really quick. Probably should have left that one open. Come on. Almost. I can do it here actually, I can do this, I can launch it in my, this is actually a new Windows feature. Uh, Windows has a m image viewer. It doesn't show my, ma my materials quite right, but uh, we can actually see the polygonal model like that, which is great and, oh it's importing my whole big scene, that's why, it's, that's what's go happening here. There we go. So now I can go and just drag and drop the model I just created into here. Did it do it? Boy, my machine's just going like a banshee. Come on. There we go. Drop it into my viewer, into Unity. There we go. Go full screen. Grab this guy. Just change the rotation on it so it looks right. And there we go. So there's our model. Nicely optimized. Um, oh, you know what? I want to show you one other thing in Pixie Studio, which I forgot, but I'll go back to that really quick. Uh, one neat thing here is if I select the model, we can see that all my material IDs are preserved. So uh, we're not generating all those draw calls. I can assign all my materials to that one base model, and then we only have one, two, three, four, five, however many this is, that many draw calls. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you in Pixie Studio, which was right now I'm at 44, uh, 44,900 triangles. I can go to reduce mesh and I can say, uh, what is it, uh, hidden removal. And what this will do is this will scan the model and it's going to use, in this case I'll, I'll keep it default, 16 different cameras. And it's going to fire 16 cameras at the model and any geometry that's inside the model that's wasted that the cameras can't see, it's going to throw those away. So it's going to further optimize it. So if I just click execute, watch this number reduce from 44,000 down to, down to. 29,000. That right there takes a long, long, long time to do manually, to fly inside your model, to find all these pieces of geometry that the camera will never, ever, ever see and just delete them. So all that stuff Studio automates for you. Um, I know I talked really, really fast, but I had a lot of stuff to show you, so hopefully you all understand English really, really well. Uh, got a few minutes left. If there's any questions, let me know. I'm going to fire up one thing really quick and there's a microphone right there which would make the question part easier. Um, but yes, anyway, there you go. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to send a picture of you all. <laughs> Say hi. Woohoo! Sweet. Question. Okay, so uh, what happens when your pipeline is still under development? What I mean is, is there a non-destructive pipeline when your CAD model is still being worked upon? Um, Hmm, that's a tricky one. Uh, yes, in a sense. So a lot of the stuff, like assigning materials, animating objects, you could do through scripting. So let's say you had a model where you had 100 material IDs. You could say, okay, when I import that model, run a script that reassigns all your materials. So it's not a good answer to your question because the CAD models, you know, it's a living thing if, if it is constantly updating it. And once you tessellate it, you're kind of breaking that. With Pixie Studio, because you have a full API behind it, you could write a pipeline tool that would allow you to do that. Um, I think the best answer for that is if you go back into the expo, the Pixies people are there, and they could probably talk to you a little bit about how the APIs would allow you to do that. But the answer is not super duper easy out of the box, and maybe that's something we'll work on, but it is something you could surely do. Anyone else? All right, well, vielen Dank. Danke schön, auf Wiedersehen, and uh, should hope this is pretty good. So thank you. Yeah.